What's up everybody, Thrall Smelly here once again. I'm the Croc Nick and I have an album review for you. So another one that came out on the 17th of June was the newest album from Exocrine, The Hybrid Sons. This comes out on Unique Leader Records. This band formed in 2013 in France. This is their fifth full length and this is some insane progressive slash tech death and it sounds a lot like Archspire, which is why I'm listening to Archspire right now, because there's a lot of similarities to be drawn. Now, I actually went over their last album, Maelstrom, when it came out. It was actually in a collection update, and I didn't necessarily like it very much. I thought it was kind of sterile, and there was just a lot of noodling, and I don't know, like nothing really stuck with me. And Tech Death is kind of a difficult one for me to get into. Like, when it's done right, I absolutely fucking love it. But often, you run into just a lot of noodles and just batshit crazy transitions and sometimes it just doesn't gel for me. And honestly, I didn't run into that as much on this album. I think this album is actually an improvement from the last one. Instead of just, you know, fucking around with an intro, this just absolutely explodes within the first second with these giant riffs, sweeps, insane drums, and some really cool keyboards. And keyboards were kind of an interesting thing on here. There are some like electronic elements on here, but when they throw in these keyboards, there's a little bit of a, like, Devin Townsend-ish kind of epic flair to them, and they do add a lot. But this blistering style of Tech Death is definitely Exocrine sound. They just love going faster than shit and squeezing in as many cool guitar licks as possible in every song. And the songs overall aren't very long. They're generally between, you know, three and a half minutes to four and a half minutes. I think there's one that's close to five on here. But the amount of stuff they condense into those shorter tracks is fucking insane. But there are some things that I notice on this album versus the last album that I think are different and actually add to it. First off, I think the production, while it is kind of tech death production, it's a little bit more sterile, a little bit, you know, more compressed. That is kind of a thing with tech death. You kind of need a lot of compression for as busy as it is. But I notice there's more chunkiness the guitars like they feel heavier and more brutal and there are definitely some seriously brutal moments on here like they go full bore like into slam breakdowns and like suffocation style just big groovy riffy stomps and that little bit of extra grit kind of helps it because this is a very polished sounding album with a lot of extra stuff on it but for me at least that heavier more gritty sound kind of adds an extra level of brutality on there and another thing about this album that i really liked is this one grooves a lot harder granted there are tons of blast beats all over here and just intricate you know drum fills and turnovers and like you know interesting breakdowns but this latches on to good four four time grooves and just gets your head banging there was groove on the last album but it was used more sparingly and i think that one was just again sort of a bullet train of madness and riffs whereas this one it's more broken down. Like you get all the insane riffing and all the insane noodles and arpeggios and every other guitar term that I don't fully understand. It's all there, but they like to lay on some seriously nasty riffs every now and then. Great example, Burning Sands has a main riff that it comes back to very often and it is catchy as fuck. It has a great groove behind it. And they use that as sort of like an anchor point of the song. Like it will come back to that, go off into some like, you know, more techie direction. There's even a thrashy section on there too that I thought was really good, but it anchors back to this main riff and you can dance around with all the noodles around that, but that is an anchor point that gives me a nice hook to come back to. And honestly, that was a thing that made a lot of these songs more memorable. The massive breakdowns that are all over End of Time, Shrine and Dying Light just generate their own massive hooks too. And again, breaks up all the madness because, I mean, the guitar work in here is absolutely phenomenal. And honestly, it's a little bit easier to follow this time around because it is broken up. And those really melodic leads are great to put on top of these great brutal riffs too. Because honestly, I would say this album is a little bit more on the brutal side than their last album, but there's always a melodic anchor point, whether it's a really cool melodic lead or really lavish keyboards that almost kind of have a Middle Eastern flair occasionally. And even on Dying Light, there are female vocals on there to sort of break up all the growls, which vocally, I really like this. This guy has a solid roar. Occasionally he brings it up to more of a hardcore sort of 
you know, belted forth yell. But the female vocals on Dying Light were kind of interesting. They kind of sit back in the mix and you kind of have to listen for them until there's like one section where they are actually isolated and you're like, oh, there are clean vocals here. But I kind of have an issue with like all the different effects they're using on her vocals. It kind of just sounds a little robotic and auto-tuned and I kind of wondered what this female guest singer actually sounded like versus well what was on the album now this album moves fast and it's kind of a short album it's like under 35 minutes but i like again the fact that it's kind of hooky and again tech death doesn't necessarily stay in one place for very long it's kind of like you know chasing around a two-year-old that's found a fucking pair of scissors and just run around like a fucking madman that's kind of tech death in a way. But this one at least will slow down for a little bit and actually really throw in some cool dynamic wrinkles, like stuff that'll catch you off guard. Like a lot of these songs will just explode, but occasionally you get some really cool intros like the acoustic lead in on Burning Sand or the spacey ambiance that leads in Vortex of Shadow, which is absolutely badass too and has a killer, I guess, chorus riff. It's kind of hard to nail down what part is a chorus because you know again the songs are structured differently and some of these songs kind of latch on to a more proggy flair and you know they are called progressive slash technical death metal but for the most part I hear technical death metal with some brutal death metal elements but occasionally they do kind of go into proggier territory where the song structure gets a little bit more wild and less I don't know, cohesive. There are two tracks in here in particular that I think definitely embody a proggier side and them kind of you know, experimenting a little bit and toying with the structure of the songs because, again, a lot of these songs, while they are very technical, like to return to key points and key anchors in terms of, like, a good solid riff or a groove. The song Watchtower, however, is batshit fucking crazy. It opens up with very electronic sort of, like, industrial elements and then it just kind of goes full tilt boogie into a myriad of riffs and noodles and blasts and while it is technically impressive, it never generates a big hook. The song is just sort of a bullet train of fucking guitar madness. It's a fucking exercise and dexterity, I think. While I think it's memorable for being kind of like one of the most nuts songs on the album, it's not memorable in the sense that it generated much of a hook for me to come back to. Like, it just kind of feels disjointed. But on the other side, Blast, which is definitely a more proggy track on here, actually works really well. In fact, it has some really cool proggy interludes where the guitars just go sort of haywire but it all comes back to like some key melodies and key hooks on there there's even a part on there where the guitars are sort of going back and forth and almost like a haken like fury except haken's on meth and moving insanely fast like maybe haken and archspire work together to form an absolutely batshit crazy section of a song but blast is kind of where the progressive side really works well it's sort of a nut song but it flows well it doesn't feel disjointed watchtower just feels like a strange collection of riffs and ideas from other songs they sort of just copy and pasted into one song. I would say Watchtower pretty much shoehorns in everything that this band does in one song that is three minutes and 35 seconds long. And that might just be too condensed for everything they do because they do a lot here. And in terms of like the flow of the whole album, like I think it flows pretty well, albeit like some missteps. Like I think the song Horns is good, but it doesn't really stand out. Watchtower again, kind of odd, but Towards the back half, it gets really strong. The last track, Shrine, is probably one of the heaviest songs on here, and that is definitely saying something because this album is heavy as fuck throughout. But it just feels way more brutal, and that Arch Spire sort of speed kind of comes out even more on that. But towards the back half, I don't know, I think some of the best ideas and some of the best riffs come out on there, and I think they wrote some of the strongest songs I've heard by them yet. And while there are a lot of cool extra elements, again, like female vocals, some industrial loops here and there, like little bleeps and sweeps and creeps and shit that kind of pop up here and there, and of course, since it doesn't feel as clustered as the last album, like everything is spaced out enough, there's enough room to breathe, and I think that little bit of extra restraint in terms of just the techie madness really helped to generate some more memorable songs on here. I mean, outside of the Art Sparrow comparisons, which you're definitely going to hear, there's definitely a lot of stuff in here that would appeal to fans of bands like Gorod and Anata as well. For me, those bands put out some really quality tech death, and this definitely reminds me of that. So. Overall, I'm gonna give this three and a half stars. I really dug this. This is, I think, an improvement from Maelstrom, which I know there are some fans of that album. I thought it was decent, but this is way better, at least in my opinion. This actually has way more memorable riffs. It still has all the technical prowess that this band has been showing off for the course of all five albums, but I think 
that little bit of restraint, like pulling back a little bit just to rock out some cool fucking riffs and then just go buck nutty on the fucking guitars and drums and all the other shit they throw in here. That makes these songs worth coming back to and makes them have more memorable sections, at least in my opinion. If you're a big fan of tech death, progressive death metal, maybe more on the tech death side and maybe a little bit of brutal death metal, I strongly recommend checking this out. This was a really fun album to listen to and honestly, I love the fact that there were so many headbangable grooves on here. That really made this even more listenable and of course if you were a giant tech nut in terms of wild guitar play and fucking insane drumming of course check this out it's an absolutely batshit crazy album but it's batshit crazy with hooks and i like that so if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time we are also on patreon if you'd like to help us out there there's a link down below we are going to do an ask us anything video based on our post there so if you are one of our patrons and haven't asked us a weird or not weird question we accept both ask us a question and we will feature it in a video there will also be a link down there to thrallsmetal.com where you can get one of our kick-ass shirts and of course denver death fest we are done taking submissions now we just have to go through all the submissions and start you know picking out our lineup and everything like that and we will definitely update you as to when we have a more set lineup or at least some confirmed bands for sure Believe me, you're going to want to check out those videos when we announce them. And of course, thank you to everyone that's watched us, subscribed, all that stuff. Uh, for those that don't know and don't follow me on Facebook, I am currently battling COVID. Yeah, it fucking got me finally. Zero out of ten. Do not fucking recommend. It sucks. And I'm even vaccinated, so... Yeah, I'm getting kind of the diet version of it, and the diet version of it fucking sucks too. So this is going to be the only other review I do for this week's releases. I'm pretty much gonna take this time to barrel through some collection update stuff and you know, I'm kind of stuck here anyway. Don't want to be around anyone because I am one of the diseased. So yeah, a lot of quality time listening to music and I don't know, maybe doing like a live stream with the Saturday Night Crew again. I don't know, anything to keep me busy because otherwise I'm gonna think about it and it fucking sucks. I hate the non-stop fucking coughing and man, I have produced a lot of snot. I can actually probably make a snot statue of myself. Maybe not life-size yet, but give me a couple of days, I'll get there. But yeah, it sucks, but I'm kind of on the tail end of it. I'm working on getting better, and it'll be back to life as normal after that. But yeah, stay safe out there, because uh, this shit's still floating around, and it still fucking sucks. But enough about COVID, and I would say COVID could suck my dick, but my dick's too good for COVID. It can suck my ass. But with that, I thank you all for watching once again, and we will catch you later.